The Jays lose a tough one here today. 8-7 against the Boston Red Sox and lose the series two games to one. But you know what I've learned with this team over the last little while? They just don't quit. You know, there were lots of points in this ball game where the Jays could have collapsed and, and just caved in, but didn't. There were, there were also some times where they did cave in, but nonetheless, they continue to fight every single inning, every single at bat. And let's talk the reason I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that real quickly here. So, top of the first inning, we have the opener. Uh, Sean Reed Foley gets sent, or was it, no, sorry, Jacob Waggy's pack got sent down to AAA Buffalo to make room for Thomas Pannone to get the start today, or I guess the, to get the longer outing, I guess, today. Uh, Marcus Stroman was supposed to start today, but because of that little injury he had in the last start, uh, they're not going to, they weren't going to pitch him today, they were going to skip his start, and I think what they're trying to do is they're going to skip him this start, let him go into the all-star break, do his thing there, and then come back ready to go for uh, the second half of the season. That's what they're going to do there with Marcus Stroman. There's no need to kill him right now anyways, right? So uh, that's just that. And they give up the solo shot. Derek Law starts the ball game, gives up the solo shot. Bottom of the first inning. All right, Freddie Galvis doubles to center field to start off the inning. Then Guriel Jr. flies out to, uh, to right field, and Freddie moves up to third base in the play. Kevin Biggio walks I mean, what else is new? The guy gets on basic at, at will. And then Justin Smoke walks in a full count. So, this again, this team being patient, being pesky. Now the bases are loaded with one out for Rowdy Telez. And he singles to center field. Galvis comes in. Biggio comes in. And, the, and then uh, Smokey ends up at third. Runners in the corners now. Jays take a 2-1 lead for Teoscar Hernandez. And then some craziness happens there. And they get out of the inning. But nonetheless... You have a 2-1 lead. You, they scored one to get that lead. You answered right back and scored two of your own. Uh, what a, it was an amazing job for the Jays against uh, Hector Velasquez. It was initially Rick Porcello's start, but he did not start today. It was Hector Velasquez. And, um, and the Jays had a 2-1 lead. Bottom of the second, Danny Jansen at the dish. And this guy is red hot. I mean, red hot. You know, in bottom of the second inning, he gets a, a fastball on the high away corner and he drills it 417 feet to dead center field his seventh home run of the year adding on to the Jays lead it's now a 3-1 game all right let's go to the bottom of the fourth Danny Jansen at the dish again on the very first pitch a slider was a hanger and he crushes it dead center and it's gone again Jansen's got two home runs, 424 feet, and the Jays have a 4-1 lead. They're feeling awesome right now. And uh, and then, uh, you know, the Jays continue on in that fourth inning. They pile on early on here. Brandon Drury then doubles to left field. Then the wild pitch, Drury moves up to third base in the play. Eric Sogard grounds out, you know. But then Freddie Galvis comes up, and he gets a first pitch, you know, uh, it's a first pitch cut fastball in the down, middle, middle low. So good spot for Freddie, and he drills it. I mean, he drills it the other way. I don't know how it gets out of here. It barely scrapes out of the yard, but it leaves the ballpark. Two run shot. The Jays got a six one lead. They, this is fantastic. But then the wheels wheels start to come off in the top of the sixth inning. Thomas Pennon goes out there, having done an amazing job in relief. Run, runs into problems, however. You know, he gives up his uh, walks, bets to start the inning. Then Devers gets a single, bets up to third. But you're up 6-1. It shouldn't really matter. And Bogart singles the right field. Bet scores. Then Martinez singles. And Devers scores. So just like that, they get a walk and three straight hits. And Pannone's day is over. And it's a 6-3 ball game. The tying run is now at the plate. And there's still nobody out. And, and uh, Tim Meza comes in to face Eduardo Nunez, and he fouls out to Danny Jansen. Great job there. And in my opinion, the turning point turning point in the game was this pitch right here. Meza throws a pitch down, and it gets away from Danny Jansen. It's a hard ball to block, and it ends up getting away from him. Both runners move up on the play. The reason I say that's a big, big moment in the game there's one out. You had runners at first and second. The double play is still in order here. And you have the catcher at the dish, Vasquez. So you have the opportunity here to get him and get out of the inning. 
sorry, get a ground ball, double play, and ball any inning over, and you hold the damage. But instead, that wild pitch, both runners move up, double play's not in order now, and there's still only one out. And I think uh, Mesa was up 1-2 or 0-2 on Vasquez, ends up walking him. And now the bases are loaded for Jackie Bradley Jr., which I was like, you know what, maybe I'm okay with this. Because, um, you know, yes, he's yes he's faster than Vasquez, but double play is in order now, force play at any base, and you have the lefty on lefty now. Well, Jackie Bradley Jr. kind of punches it into the shift, or I guess away from the shift. Galvis makes an amazing play. Biggio books it over to second base, makes it a fantastic play. They score a run. However, it's a 6-4 game, and you got two outs now for Michael Chavis. And, Mac, and Tim Meza throws a pitch on the inner half to Chavis. And he crushes a three-run shot. And the Red Sox now then have the 7-6 lead. The Jays give up six runs in that one inning. You had a 6-1 lead, and then you're trailing by one. That just can't happen. You just can't allow that. Good teams will have to shut guys down. Don't care what the offensive team looks like. It's the way it happened there. But the Jays weren't done just yet, though. Danny Jensen in the bottom of the eighth. He didn't, he didn't hit a third home run, if you guys are wondering. Uh, he hits a double over the left field left fielder's head. It's ground rule double. He's at second with one out. A couple batters later, Eric Sogard at the dish with two out. And Danny Jensen, was he at second or third? Either way, he was in scoring position. I think he was at second, actually. And, Jan, and, and, they, and they put the shift on Sogard, putting Bogarts up the middle. But if they had him in the initial shift, Sogard would be out. But he hits it into the hole. Jansen comes around to score. The Jays have tied it back up at seven. Once again, I say, the resilience of the Toronto Blue Jays. Fantastic. And then we go to the top of the ninth inning. You know, Ken Giles on the mound. Looking to, you know, give the Jays a zero and then go into the... Uh, Go into the bottom of the ninth inning looking, looking to walk it off. And uh, things don't look good. Marco Hernandez comes to the dish. And literally everything that you look at when you look at the stats and you look at the way he hit the ball and everything, it's a, a 96 mile an hour fastball right on the inside corner. And he hits it right down the line, 337 feet, not very deep. And it's gone. 8-7 Red Sox. You go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Jays have runners at first and second. Looking to win the ball game. Vladdy at the dish. And he chops out to end it. So, you could say that this game was all about that six-run inning and then a solo shot to a guy who only had his second home run of the year. But in the end, you got to look at it from a Jays fan perspective and say, okay, what are the positives? Well, the positives are... Freddie Galvis went 2 or 5, had a couple RBIs and a home run and scored a couple runs. Good job. Gurriel Jr. guys went 0 for 5 with a strikeout. He had a rough ball game. And Biggio, yes, he went 0 for 2 and he struck out, but he walked three times. Kevin Biggio doing amazing things as usual and he scored a run as well. Justin Smoke, 1 for 3, walked twice. Rowdy Telez, 1 for 5 with a couple RBIs in that game. But again, a couple big strikeouts for Rowdy Telez in the ball game. And a 1, I think it was in the, was it in that 8th inning? I think it was. Or no, was it the seventh? Anyways, there was one one moment where they I think it was uh, they had a guy at third or a guy at second and third, and, and Rowdy Tellez swings at a curveball in the dirt, and it's like, man, the guy threw you all curveballs, and, and you strike out on one. It was just not a good at bat from Rowdy Tellez. And uh, Hernandez goes one for four in the ball game. Obviously, Vladdy goes zero for one. But the bottom of the line of coming clutch once again. You look at yesterday's ball game and the last few ball games. Um, Danny Jansen and Brandon Drury have played great baseball. And Danny Jansen, uh, he went three for four with a couple of home runs, three runs scored, scored two RBI, had two RBIs. And the guy's hitting 208 now. A guy that not too long ago was hitting 168 is now hitting 208. And it is great to see Danny Jansen find that bat. We know what he is as a catcher. So to see him hitting the ball the way he, the way we were seeing now, it's awesome. And Brandon Drury, after the big two-run shot there yesterday... He went two for four with the run scored there today. He's hitting 218. Still not very good on the season, but a great job there. We talked about Derek Law's performance. So, uh, two thirds of an inning, two hits, a run, and really wasn't that great. And Thomas Pinot on the line doesn't suggest how well he pitched, but one rough inning. That was it. Four and a third, four hits, four runs, and four strikeouts. Put in perspective, they had three hits off him in that one inning. 
The rest of the ball game, he was dynamite, and they just they just got to him in that one inning. Mesa. One, uh, one inning, one hit. Obviously, the three-run shot to Michael Chavis and walked the batter and gave up two runs. Joe B. Gini went a clean inning, walked the batter. Uh, Nick Kingham went a clean inning, struck out a batter. And then Ken Giles picks up the loss. Obviously, the home run to Marco Hernandez in the ninth. All right, now quickly we're going to hit the minor leagues, guys, and, and kind of see what's going on down there. The Buffalo Bisons, not a whole lot to talk about uh, down there in Buffalo. I know that um, Bo Bichette, no, no, that's not updated. Hold on. I think Bo Bichette went one for five in that ball game there today. Uh, scored a run in the game, had an RBI, uh, hitting 299 on the year down there. And a guy that I want to keep an eye on in the bullpen. It's just a little thing. Ty Tice, the reliever, he has put up insane numbers all year long. All right, down in Double A, New Hampshire, where he started the year. By the way, his birthday today. Happy birthday, Ty Tice. Uh, he went one and three with a 1.09 ERA in 20 games uh, as a reliever. Uh, for the for the New Hampshire Fisher Cats, and since he's gotten called up to the Buffalo Bisons, uh, he's two and zero with a one point six four earned run average in seven ball games. So got to keep an eye on there as a reliever, him and and um, Zach Jackson are the two guys out of the bullpen that I think might be impact players for the Blue Jays heading into September. That's just my feel towards that. Double A New Hampshire, uh, Santiago Espinal one for three in the ball game. Riley Adams one for four. And uh, that's about it. Zach Lowe has been rough lately, and he got lit up once again. But uh, we're going to go down to the Dunedin Blue Jays real quick we're real quick here, guys. And Cal Stevenson, one for four. Alejandro Kirk, my boy, one for three with a couple walks. And I didn't realize Alejandro Kirk's hurt. Kirk is hitting 320 with an on-base of over 430. And the guys ate, like, 20. Guys ripping it up there in Dunedin. Demi Orlamoye went one for four in the ball game, and Nick Podcool two for four with a couple RBIs. He's in two ninety in a very short time there in Dunedin. Great job, and my boy, Josh. Sorry, that was probably a little too loud, but Josh Winkowski, the man himself, has done an amazing job since being called up to Dunedin. He has thrown a total of like what seventeen innings, something along those lines. Maybe is maybe fourteen. It's either 14 and 17 innings. He went seven innings again today, one hit, walked one, and struck out six and didn't allow a run. He has been fantastic all year long. He tore up Lansing, and he's come up to Dunedin and continues to do amazing. Amazing job there by Josh Winkowski there today. Down in Lansing for the Lug Nuts, Gabriel Moreno, the catcher, doing amazing things. He was two for three with an RBI and a run scored. The 20-year-old kid. Uh, 301 average down there. Griffin Cohn, I went 0 for 2 with a walk in the ball game. Or, sorry, excuse me. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, oh, we ended up going one for three with a walk. Good job, Conine. He's hitting 330 on the year and uh, nothing really great on the mound. So we're going to quickly, I don't, is Vancouver playing right now? I think they are. Uh, 635 first pitch. Yeah, and then they're, they're in the third and it's a 0-0 ball game. We're not going to look at that, though. The Bluefield Blue Jays, however, are playing right now. Is it over yet? It was the bottom of the sixth last time. No, it's top nine, and uh, Bluefield is losing 8-3. They were up at one point, uh, 3-1. So that's the minor leagues for you. Um... Miguel Geraldo doing great things. He was two for four in the ball game with a run scored and a walk. He's hitting 286 down there. The young 18, 19 year old kid, uh, uh, Jimenez. All right, I think it's Olivieris or something, something, along, something along those lines. He was one for three with the walk, and he's hitting 281 down there in Bluefield. All right, guys, and, and another note. Uh, I think down in the GCL, the Gulf Coast League for the Blue Jays, Dalton Pompey went two for three in his first game since. <laughs> that whole injury thing early in the season. All right, so with the with the loss there today, the Jays now welcome in the Baltimore Orioles for a three-game set. I think it's a three-game set. Or, yeah. Uh, yes, before the All-Star break here. All right, let's go quickly through it here. Aaron Sanchez, Dylan Bundy are the starters there tomorrow. We're not, I don't know what we're going to see from Sanchez. Uh, Clayton Richard, Andrew Kashner in Game 2, and then the finale on Sunday. Uh, I think it's Gabriel Inoa and Trent Thornton are starting pitchers there in the three-game set. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoy the video and the ball game because it was entertaining nonetheless. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that. And the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, the video, the minor leaguers, the big leaguers. What do you think of Dandy Jansen as of late? I'm going to hear your guys' thoughts about this team and everything going on with them. And I'll talk to you guys. Uh, or sorry, check out my main man, Blue Jays Wave, on in, on Instagram. Mo Buckets on Twitter. Uh, I, wasn't be able, I wasn't able to be on his uh, podcast there today because of the whole funeral thing. If you guys listened to the last uh, video and saw Twitter, uh, that's just what happened today. It's been, a, it's been a really rough day, guys. That's why I haven't done the, the leaf video for you guys yet. But that will be uploaded there tonight as well. Just a heads up, all right? Check out my main man, Blue Jays Wave, on Instagram, guys. Twitter is down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys, Rappers Edition, at some point when the heck Kawhi Leonard decides to sign. 
decides to sign. Uh, Blue Jays edition, or sorry, Leafs edition very shortly as we talk about the Kerfoot signing, and I love the deal. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. And the Blue Jays open up a three-game set against the Orioles the last series before the All-Star break. Aaron Sanchez, Dylan Bunny are the starting pitchers there tomorrow night at Rogers Center. Rogers Center, 707 first pitch. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys then.